My name is Wendy Bohan. I am a PhD candidate in the School of Earth and Space Exploration here at Arizona State University. And I am the social media coordinator for the Earthscope National Office. Social media, I think, is uh, really underutilized by the scientific community because it really gives us a chance to access communities that we don't normally have the opportunity to communicate with directly. It's a very informal environment and we can uh, talk to a few people or to millions of people. It's eminently scalable. It's already heavily used by news agencies. People know it's there. So we can utilize this resource to disseminate high quality scientific information. I am working in the Karakoram fault system that runs through uh, Tibet, Pakistan, and Northwest India. So this is a fault system very similar to the San Andreas Fault. It's about the same length and it has the same sense of motion. It's a strike-slip fault. However, much less is known about the Karakoram Fault than the San Andreas Fault. Uh, for instance, we don't know when the fault started, its age of initiation. We don't know its slip rate or how fast one sli side is sliding past the other. We also don't know how big the earthquakes that it produces can be, which is really important if we're thinking about seismic hazards. In order to better understand the behavior and evolution of this fault system, I use a variety of tools and techniques. So one of the things I do is go out into the field and map the geology, and then I also bring back rock samples to analyze in the laboratory. In particular, I do a lot of thermochronology, and that's taking the rocks, crushing them up from a whole rock sample into these tiny little separates. And we do that in a variety of different ways, and we want really uh, small individual minerals from each one, different types of crystals like apatites, zircons, and hornblende. So here is where we pick apatites and zircons, and these are minerals that we use for thermochronology, which we can use for a variety of different reasons to learn about how rocks have traveled from deep inside the earth towards the crust. So we pick the crystals here in the microscope. There's a screen right here so we can get a better view. This is a good one right here. You can see it has a nice crystal habit. This one is a good one as well, but you see it's been broken in the middle, so we probably wouldn't choose that one. Uh, these are niobium tubes that we place the zircon and or apatite grains inside. We'll take this tube, put it inside the laser, and extract the gas from the crystal. And we can use these to learn about how the rock traveled from deep inside the crust up towards the surface, which can tell us how the fault has been behaving over millions of years. When I was going through school, I had this feeling that everything had been discovered. We already knew everything that there was to know. And once you start thinking about things, and once you've had a little more exposure to things, you realize there's a whole world of things that we don't know. There's a lot of questions that need to be asked. And now we have all this great technology that allows us to really ask these questions in new and exciting ways. If you're interested in getting uh, the latest and greatest scientific information, please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, join our circle on Google+, subscribe to us on YouTube, and um, you can also join us on LinkedIn.